So let's take some of this. Oh God, actually, I don't know how pigmented it is and I've literally just dunked my brush in it. Like where? <laughs> where? <laughs> Smells like glue, good sign. Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm gonna to be doing a full face of the new Boots 17 range. 17 makeup used to exist when I was a teenager and then I did, sounds kind of bad. I didn't even notice that it would sort of been discontinued, but it just disappeared from Boots and I guess they got rid of it. I'm not too sure why, but recently they have brought it back with entirely new branding and products. It's all very, very affordable. They did send me a few bits in a PR package, but there were so many other bits that I wanted to test. So I also went ahead and made an order off of Boots. So half of this stuff is gifted, half of this stuff I bought. Each item is between like two and five pounds. Just to give an example of the prices, the foundation is five pounds, the concealer is two pounds, the eyeshadow palettes are five pounds, mascaras are four pounds, primer three pounds, eyeliner three pounds. So it all seems to be between the two and five pound mark. So it's incredibly affordable and I hope it's good. So I've got some moisturizing SPF on my face. That's all I've got on right now. Oh, also as well, I don't know if this is still a thing, but if you spend over a certain amount on boots, you get this free gift. So I have got two different primers here. I've got the base glow illuminating primer and then I've got the photo filter balm primer because this looked so similar to the e.l.f. putty primer that I kind of wanted to try both so I think what I'm gonna do is put the illuminating primer all over my face because I've got a couple dry patches like one up here on my forehead and like round the sides of my face and stuff and a little bit on my chin where I've been trying to get rid of a massive spot and then I'll put the balm primer which I think is more mattifying just on my t-zone so this is what the packaging looks like it just looks like this it looks like it might have a little bit of shimmer in there there definitely is a little bit of almost like metallic in it like it's a little bit shimmery, but it's not chunky glitter or anything, but it definitely has that sort of shininess to it. It's almost got a bit of like gold mixed in with it, I think. It doesn't feel particularly hydrating. It's more just like a little bit of a moisturizer type feeling, but a little bit more dry than a moisturizer. And then it's got some like shimmeriness feels fine. So then I'm gonna go in with this balm primer. Lightweight balm primer to instantly achieve that smooth and perfect skin look. It just looks very similar to the e.l.f. putty primer. So I'm just gonna dig my fingernail into it because I don't think, actually, I don't think I need to dig my fingernail into it. <laughs> well, it's too late. It feels like it. you can actually just pick some up on your finger and sort of do this. Oh, it's a very interesting feeling. Let's just take that bit that I just gouged, <laughs> gouged out and put it on my nose. So I'm just sort of dipping my fingers into it and then I'm just gonna sort of pat it almost on my nose mostly and like this part of my cheeks. It definitely has mattified a little bit as you can sort of see. Feels a little bit more slippery than the e.l.f. putty primer. It's almost got that like silicone type of feel. Put some in my small lines and a little bit on my chin. It feels fine. It does feel very sort of silky smooth. It feels quite nice, you know? Let's see how the foundation applies over the top of it. So I went for the second skin foundation. They did also have a CC cream and I think they also had one other foundation as well. The shades were so weird. They had a picture of swatches on the website of like one, two, three, four, five. And then it said one equals zero zero and then a number and then a letter the letters were sort of based on the undertone so i went for zero zero one y but this isn't the lightest shade i think it would have made so much more sense if they'd have just named the foundations like one y for one yellow or like three N for three neutral or something. Do you know what I mean? It was just so confusing. Shade range could definitely do with some improvement. It says it's a long lasting liquid foundation with medium coverage. It has got a squeezy sort of like nozzle thing, which I do quite like. Oh, maybe that was a bit much. I don't actually know if this shade is gonna match me. I just kind of took a stab in the dark with it. I'm gonna try one side with a sponge and one side with a brush. So let's try this side with a sponge. Not bad. One sec, let me just turn the brightness down. You know what? It's going on pretty nicely with the sponge. Kind of don't want to try it with a brush now in case it makes it go really streaky, but let's just try the other side with a brush. This is the e.l.f. putty, pri yeah, funnily enough, the e.l.f. putty primer brush. Hmm. You know what? Both sides have actually gone on pretty nicely. I think the sponge side definitely looks smoother though. This side almost looks like it's picking up on the texture of my skin a little bit more. So I'm just going to go in with the sponge for the rest of my face. Oh, I think it's dried down. A little bit. Okay, yeah, it dries quite quickly. Don't know if you can see that on your on my forehead, but don't spend ages talking while you're putting it on like I do. I wasn't really sure what to expect. It's definitely more matte than I expected. I thought it might be quite glowy, but it's actually a pretty matte foundation. I do have a couple dry bits, like I've got a dried out sort of like spot on my cheek here where I feel like it's 
picking up on the dryness a little bit. Even in the areas where I put the illuminating primer, I feel like the foundation has kind of fully mattified it. I'm just gonna try putting a little bit more on, just on the center of my face. I've got a little bit of pink staining on my eyes from doing some eyeshadow yesterday with pink eyeshadow. Oh wow, just notice how patchy my neck is. I think the shade is a little bit light, but I think once I bronzed up and everything, it'll be fine. It's nothing like what I expected it. I thought it was gonna be really, really glowy, but it's very matte. This is what it is currently looking like. It does, on my chin where I've got like quite big pores and a little bit of texture, it is emphasizing that area a little bit and you can definitely see it on my skin. It's not like a skin-like foundation. You know, you can tell that you've got foundation on. Do you see what I mean? Like around my chin, just here. But for a fiver, it's not bad. Then I've got the concealer, and same with the concealer, the shades were so confusing. I went for 002N in the concealer. Oh, the doe fit actually looks pretty nice. It's slightly curved. Oh, wow. It's quite thick. Yeah, you know what? The doe, the doe fit's not bad. It's quite sort of flexible, and it picks up quite a lot of concealer. This is definitely going to be too light, isn't it? It feels quite thick, and again, it feels quite a matte concealer. You know what? For two pounds... That is not bad at all. It's definitely, like I said, like more on the matte side. Let's see how it goes on any blemishes. I think it's definitely best applied with a sponge. I know that I haven't tried it with any other sort of method, but the way that it's sort of going on, if you were to use a brush with this, it might be a little bit trickier to blend. You don't want to sort of move it around too much. Yeah, it's not looking great on my chin. I don't normally paint my concealer on my eyelids, but I feel like I just want a little bit more coverage, you know? Definitely could do with a little bit more coverage on my blemishes, I think. But I wasn't expecting the world for £2. I think for £2, it's it's done the job. I think it looks the best under my eyes um, as opposed to on my blemishes and stuff. To be honest, probably not a concealer that I would necessarily reach for, but I think for the price, it's actually pretty good. I'm gonna have to do things here in a little bit of a weird order because I've got powder and I've got cream blush, but they don't have any cream bronzer. So they did send me one of the cream blushes in the shade Soft Pink, but this just looked way too light. I swatched it on my hand and it kind of just disappeared into nothing. I'll just show you. So it comes out like that. And then when you sort of blend it in, it's like a gel formula, and the more you blend it, it just sort of disappeared completely. So, online, I went for the shade Lemonade, which is 030. Bit scared of how this is going to react with the matte foundation, because this is so sort of lightweight and gel-like, and the foundation is so matte, I don't know how they're going to mesh, but I guess we'll find out. See, when you first start blending, it looks promising, because I put on a decent amount. Yeah, like this, looks promising, looks promising, but then you go to blend it even more. And like, where did it go? It just disappears. Let's put on quite a lot. Done a big old blob. Let's try and blend this out and see if you can sort of layer it. I mean, you can see it. It's just not very pigmented at all. I don't have time in the mornings to be sitting here adding five layers of cream blush. Also, it's not mixing particularly well with a foundation, like I was saying, because this is more of a dewy product. I feel like where they sort of meet here, there's a little bit of a patchy area. I don't know, can you see that? I'm not a fan of that. I'm really sad because I love a liquid and cream blush, but I'm just not a fan of it. But I do have a powder blush to test. The concealer is so matte that it kind of set itself. I mean, I still obviously will powder. They had this one, which was £3.50, which is the loose powder. It's called the Perfecting Finish Translucent Powder. And you know what? I saw this and I thought it looked really similar to the Primark one that I love, the PS Love, whatever that powder is called. I can't even remember, but this is just like a translucent white lightweight powder by the looks of things. And then the other one is the Ultimate Look Finishing Powder. I got the shade 010. And this one is just like a classic pressed powder. It looks like it might have a little bit of coverage. But again, I feel like the shade might be a little bit too light. So I think I will set my under eyes with the loose powder. By the way, I will leave everything linked down below so that you guys can have a little look at the shades of everything and the prices and stuff. Ooh. Oh, I really like that. That looks really smooth. And it doesn't feel heavy at all. It feels so lightweight. So I feel like it hasn't given me like unnecessary extra wrinkles under my eyes. Let's do the other side with a brush to see the difference of a sponge versus brush. Both sides look and feel really smooth. The ultimate question will be, does this have flashback? We will see. I really like that. It feels really nice and really light. On the rest of my face, I'm actually gonna take the other powder. Let's see if this has got sort of extra coverage or if it's just a almost translucent kind of thing. Okay, it's not really giving 
much coverage at all, but that's fine. Oh, it's giving a tiny bit actually, but I wasn't really expecting it to. Overall, I'm definitely looking a bit washed out. I think I did pick the wrong shades for most of these products. This powder is fine. It's just a pretty bog standard setting powder. It feels a little bit cakey, looks a little bit cakey. I definitely prefer this one. This one feels so nice. I'm gonna bronze up my face and then we'll do a flashback test. So for the bronzer, I got the shade 010, which I think was the lightest shade. I think they had three different shades of this and it looks quite cool toned. It's called the Glow and Define Bronzer. So let's take some of this. Oh God, actually, I don't know how pigmented it is and I've literally she just dunked my brush in it. Oh, phew, it's not too bad. Considering it's called the Glow and Define Bronzer, super reflecting pearl pigments to give that fresh beach glow. I'm not seeing that. I'm not seeing the glow. Maybe I need to add some more. Yeah, I'm not getting any glow. To me, this just looks like a matte bronzer, which is fine, but don't call it the glow, glow. What is it called? Glow and Define bronzer with supposed super reflecting pigments in it. Like where? <laughs> where? But it's not a bad bronzer at all. It's not super patchy or anything. It actually is doing a pretty decent job. I quite like the shade of it and it's not too pigmented because as you first saw, I dipped my brush in there a lot and it didn't come out like really muddy looking or anything. It's all right. We have then got the blush and oh my goodness, the blush pictures looks nothing how they really are. This one is called Plum Blossom and this looks a lot more like the one that I've ordered. I ordered the shade called Copper Tone and Copper Tone on the website <laughs> looks like this and mine looks like this. I thought, okay, it might be like a coppery orange sort of color, but this is a straight up sort of plummy blush. I'm very confused. And it does say Copper Tone on the back. Definitely not the shade I was expecting, but we'll try it. Oh Lord. Okay, phew! It is not as dark as it looks in the pan, thank goodness. Oh, I just realized I didn't contour my nose, I need to do that. Everything so far has just been very matte, like very, very matte. I just think my skin is looking a bit dry. It's definitely like nicely pigmented. By the way, I didn't set my eyelids yet because I'm gonna do my eyeshadow and prime my eyes. At this stage, I feel like I should do a flashback test. You know what, I'm just gonna leave the room and do this in the hallway where there's no like big lights. It's not bad at all. I thought it was gonna come up with like a really white under eye, but it actually hasn't. But one thing that I've just noticed from having the flash on is that the loose powder is ever so slightly shimmery, which I did not notice just in natural light. And you can't see, you can't really see the shimmer until you shine a torch on it. The one area where it doesn't look so great in camera is where I've got like a little bit of texture here where I've got a few like bumps on my nose. The shimmer of that loose powder has sort of picked up on it a bit and the side that I used the sponge to sort of press it in looks better than the one that I used with the brush. I don't know if you're gonna be able to tell on camera but let me just like shine a torch on my face. Can you see any of that shimmer under my eyes from that loose powder? I don't know if you can really see. That is so strange though, because you can barely see that when you're just looking with the naked eye. This is the time where I've realized I've got a liquid highlighter after I have just powdered my entire face. Well, we'll see if this works over powder. It says it is a lightweight liquid highlighter for luminous skin with just one drop. Shea butter enhances your natural complexion. You can wear it alone or mix with makeup. And I have got the shade Rose. Okay. Ooh. Oh, it shears out quite a lot and it does have tiny little like specks of glitter in it, but you can't really see it. Okay, let's put some on the back of my hand first and then I can just take a little bit on my finger and pat it on. You can see the, the actual like chunkier glitter a little bit more actually on my skin. That's so strange. It's almost like the powder and the matteness has absorbed the dewiness of the product, like the liquidy part, and then it just leaves behind like little glitters. But you know what? It's actually working over the top of my powder. I'll try and get a close up in a sec so that you can sort of see what it looks like. I don't really know how well you can tell. It looks more reflective on camera, but it does have these like little glittery particles in it. It looks more intense on camera than it does in real life. Not my fave. I'm gonna try the powder highlighter on the other side. This is in Champagne. They had three shades of highlighter, I think. And it just looks like this. It looks like, it's quite yellow gold. It looks quite sort of dry in the pan. Do you see what I mean? I mean, obviously dry because it's a powder, but. Oh, oh no. How is it possible for a highlighter to look dry? I don't know whether it's because my base is so matte. Can you see, like, it just sort of is, 
emphasizing the texture and the dryness almost on my face. It more just looks like it's sitting there rather than blending in with my skin. But on camera, like from this distance, it looks sort of fine. It just looks very powdery. There are many highlighters that you can get that are really affordable that are a lot better than this one, unfortunately. It does the job, but it's not the best. For my eyebrows, I've got three different things. I've got the Brow and Lash Lamination Clear Mascara, the Precise Definition Tinted Gel, and I got the shade Brown, and then I got the Full Definition Brow Pencil in the shade Ashy Brown. So I think I'm gonna go in with the Tinted Brow Gel first, just to see how much color this gives. Oh, I like the brush, it's really small. This shade Brown though looks really dark. Again, it was quite hard to tell from the pictures, but the ashy brown shade of this looked really, really light. But I like the brush. Definitely giving me some tint. I like this. It's not putting too much product in my eyebrows, but it's just giving me enough colour. Yeah, it's just done exactly what it says on the tin. I actually like how not too much product comes out, because sometimes it can get really messy, but that's pretty great. It doesn't feel like it's got too much hold in it, but it's more just like for the colour. Let's then go in with the pencil, which looks like a pretty skinny brow pencil. It looks decent and it's got a spoolie on the other side. It feels quite hard. Not sure if the colour is quite right. I think it might be a little bit light. Like you have to press quite hard with it. It's definitely doing the job. I just think it would be better if it was a little bit softer. I mean, it's not the worst. I'm just having to go over the areas that I want to be more pigmented quite a few times. And then finally, to set all of that in place, I'm going to use the Brow Lamination Mascara stuff. It smells like glue. Good sign. Um, hopefully, it's going to give me the sort of hold that I want. It's very wet. That's what she said. But I quite like a brow gel. They make my eye brows look really sort of almost a bit shiny so that it emphasizes the brow hairs a bit more. Pretty decent. I'm just gonna wait for this to dry and see how they feel when they're dry to see if it sort of like keeps them in place or not. I think my eyebrows look pretty good. I do think that when I put the highlighter on, it sort of took off some of the blush. My face just is looking a bit flat. I'm not crazy about the base. Let's see if this makes things any better because it's the Dewy Prep Setting Spray and it says that it's got a subtle gloss finish. So I'm hoping Hoping that if I spray some of this, it will bring more life back to my skin. I like the packaging. Hmm, not too bad. Oh, spoke too soon. The spritzer on it is quite intense, but I do actually think that that's given a little bit extra moisture to my face. Yeah, I don't mind that. I just don't really like the spray of it. I'll do the eyeshadow test with one of the eyeshadows. This one is one of the ones that they sent me and they sent 040 greens. And I actually think this looks pretty good. It looks quite nice. So we'll see what this is like for a fiver. But first, let's take one of the matte eyeshadows. Oh, wow, wow, that's really pigmented. Put it on my arm. We're gonna do the setting spray test. Spray it, dry it, and see if it smudges. In the meantime, I'm just gonna prime my eyes. I'm just using the Revolution eye, eye base. Setting spray is still drying. I think I'm actually gonna start with that green that I did put on my arm. Hmm. Okay. That is really pigmented. Look at that. I'm then gonna take the mint shade, this matte one that's quite a lot lighter. Decently pigmented. Let's put some of this on the edges to sort of blend that color out of it. To try and blend out that shade. Oh no! I know that greens can be tricky, but those shades are sort of like meeting and then not connecting. Oh my goodness. Yeah, do you see what I mean? They're not wanting to actually blend together. Oh, oh no! I think by itself that shade would be okay, but it's just not wanting to mix with the other green shade, which is kind of like what you would hope it would do. Let's go back in with that darker green that I initially used, because that one by itself was really pigmented. Let's try and add some more of that to blend them a bit better. <sighs> Where do I go from here? Do I try and go in with one of these shimmers? They seem pretty nice. I think I'm gonna try and take this middle shimmer color. Or not wanna go on over the top of the matte shades. I'm just gonna stop for a sec. I'm gonna cut my crease in the middle and do like a halo eye. Put some here, look up, stamps it in the right place. And then I'll use that as my guide. Then I'm gonna take this shade, the middle shade that I was trying to use a minute ago, and I'm gonna put that on the outer part of that halo. This color is really pretty. Right, we are definitely not done yet. And then I think I will take this shade, 
which is the greeny gold oh my god okay it's really soft you don't need a lot be careful that was it's quite crumbly so just pick up a little bit and actually i guess it's more of a gold than a green i'm just putting that on the very center of my eyelid let me try putting it on with my finger on the other side yeah it goes on so much better with a finger i'm just trying to get right up to that cut crease line and blend that into the other shade now, i did have a couple issues with oops with the two matte shades sort of blending together but i think if i'd have just used one or the other it probably would have turned out a bit better oh my goodness i've just remembered i bought one of these pigments because i thought it looked so beautiful and this one is called cream glitter 010 it's just a powder pigment and it is so pretty it almost reminds me of the makeup by mario glittery eye topper thing so i'm actually just going to take a little bit of this and i'm going to spray some setting spray on my brush oh my god i never even tested the setting spray to see if it actually set should we give this a go okay it still smudges a little bit some of the color still there and it feels a little bit sort of sticky tacky but a lot of that did just smudge and i'm just going to put that on the very very center It is very, very beautiful. I'm just not sure the best method to apply it. I think probably a glitter primer would work the best. It was almost like muddling in with the shade on my lid, but on my inner corners, you can see how reflective that is. I've got the iFlix pen, which is their quick drying black eyeliner, which just looks like a classic sort of felt tip. And then I've also got two of their Ink Legend tattoo liners in white and silver because... I love a bit of graphic liner. I'm gonna do my black liner first. So it's just got a felt tip, which looks like this. Kind of like a classic looking felt tip. Pretty decent. It's not the most black eyeliner I've ever tried, but the actual felt tip isn't bad. I'm just gonna take the white liner over the top of the black. Mm. It's not a bad white liner, you know. I feel like maybe I regret that decision. It looks a bit weird. <laughs> Let's then take the silver and it kind of actually just blends in with <laughs> the gold eyeshadow that I put on there. I was going to try and outline the halo eye a bit, but now it just looks like I've made the halo eye even bigger. I do kind of wish that I hadn't outlined that liner, but... So I've got the Extreme Extension Mascara. I think they had two different, actually they had more than two different ones, but the brush on this looks really good actually. It's a plastic brush and it's got really short bristles, which is normally what I go for. So let's see what it's like. Oh my God. It's quite a dry formula. I like a dry formula because you can usually get more volume and oh my gosh, this is actually really good. It's really gripping my lashes. It's a little bit clumpy. Oh, I do quite like that mascara. I'd love to see what it looks like without liner and everything because I think it would be pretty good. This isn't from 17, but I'm just going to put a bit of nude liner in my waterline. This was a Kiko pencil. I have got three lip products. I've got a lip liner called Dusty Peach. I've got a high shine lip crayon in toffee peach. In the package that they sent, they did send dusky pink in the lip liner, but it's just a very pink color. It's just quite pink. Let me try this lip liner. It does look quite light. Oh, it's really sharp. Okay, yeah, that's too light. Formula feels nice, but yeah, it's very creamy. But the color is a little bit too light for my lips, I think. Let's try a bit of the dusky pink over the top. This one's just a bit too pink. The other one's a bit too peach. They didn't have like a nice nude. Mmm, not crazy about those colours. Let's try the Toffee Peach Lip Crayon because this looks like a much nicer colour. Okay, yeah, that's more like it. I like that. Feels nice. I like the colour of that. I do like it. I'm just really not feeling this look that I've come up with. <laughs> Why, Soph, did you ruin it with the eyeliner? I'm gonna try and make this a bit thicker. It didn't draw very well over the top of it because it's so like matte and dry. I think that looks more normal. Does what is off with this look? Something about it is just off. Okay, I think I like that a bit better. But I'm gonna stop there and put everything down because otherwise I would just keep going. So these were how the eyes turned out. Also, I've realized I never checked my eyebrows. Okay, they don't feel particularly firm 
like they're still quite easily movable but they do look nice hi guys i'm filming this little update on my phone because my camera battery is currently on charge it is now half midnight this has been on my face for about nine and a half hours now and this is what we are looking like i'm just stood in front of my softbox light i have got pretty oily on my nose and sort of around here but you know what it's actually lasted better than i thought it would i was actually expecting the foundation to sort of break down quite a lot more than it has but i think because everything started out so matte it's taken the extra time for my oils to come through and everything it does look quite cakey sort of like around these areas and just like on my face in general and around my nose it's really sort of picked up on these like pory sort of areas but the eyeshadow has lasted really well the mascara hasn't smudged the blush is still definitely still there overall not bad but i would still say that like the base products the foundation the concealer they're just a little bit too matte for me i'm impressed with how everything on my eyes held up oh i feel like this eyeliner is cracked a little bit wow this is not flattering the overall look it was quite mixed to be fair the things that i would probably use again are the mascara the colored liquid liners the lip crayon and maybe the setting spray oh and the eye pigment and this powder i really liked this powder but overall definitely some products there that are worth having a look at there are more shades of the eyeshadow palette as well and more shades of pretty much everything that i tried as usual i will leave everything linked down below in case you guys want to get these products yourself i hope you guys enjoyed this and i will see you in my next video Bye.